What's up, guys? Hope you have a fantastic week so far. Another Warhammer video. Uh, probably should start making some like variety in my content. <laughs> There's just so much Warhammer stuff to cover, you know. And you guys always post such great stuff in the comments. That's like I just long list of stuff I gotta do, and I'm like, well, I want to do this. But you guys like Warhammer, so I'm just like, I don't know. So we're doing more Warhammer because I love you guys, okay? So we'll, we'll, we'll just do some more Warhammer, okay? Um, I actually found this one. I don't know if you guys ever put it in the comments, but I actually found this one. It's five horrifying moments of Warhammer. Um, I thought this might clarify some areas that might be like I might be like on the edge about because you know you hear about stuff that happens in Warhammer. These you know, you know this happened, this happened, turns to this, demons to this, you know, orcs to this. But kind of like see something that's like in full scale, something that like some of the worst events that kind of like in my opinion changed the entire like 40k verse i'm assuming that's what it is because there's been a lot of horrifying things in, in warhammer i know you guys know that very well and if it's called five horrifying moments it has to be something that's quite impactful i i, I believe you know um uh, for the people who are like me that just started out in warhammer and you know star wars I like star wars i'm a big fan of star wars I uh, think of like when the Death Star first came out and it was just blowing up shit. You know, that could change everything, you know. It could change everything. So it's like, it's something like that. Probably in this verse and the 40k verse is probably in a much larger scale, obviously. But that's how I'm kind of using my brain to kind of put in perspective what I'm about to watch. Alright, guys, make sure you guys go in the description. Support the original creator. It's Major Kill. I know you guys told me to watch more of his content because he does a phenomenal job. Please give him some love. He deserves every little bit of it. Uh, you guys make sure to like and subscribe as well. I'd really appreciate it. And without further ado, let's get to it. Hey, hey. The first horrifying on this list involves spiders. I'm not afraid Great. of spiders, as I'm sure many of you are also not. So this one hits home a bit harder. In the Beckwin Saga, which is the third Damn. trilogy for the Inquisition series, we follow the perspective of a blank clone of Elizabeth Beckwin, Eisenhorn's old companion. She's in an elite society that clone. claims it's a training ground for Inquisitors, but it's actually the opposite. As such, we gather a lot of things are wrong. Clues here and there that point towards there being a sinister force behind the entire society. Then there is the super creepy way some society members' voices crackle when they talk. It's uncovered that the people with the crackly voices have pretty overpowered abilities that allow them mm. to project powerful forms of energy to destroy their enemies. Hey, that's pretty cool. Kinda like Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> until we discover the source of those powers. See, the society would clone a blank, train that clone, and then once they were ready, shove a big magic spider down their throat that would live inside their body, with the crackling voice being the reverb of the lungs against the spider within them. We find this out as an Empress Children's Psycho what? kills one of the society members by forcefully extracting the spider and crushing it. The clone of Beckwin obviously feels pretty sick seeing this as the society intended to put a spider in her as well before shit went down and her true adventure began. The horror element here is the build-up. We know something is wrong. We know there is something sinister going on and we think we might be just starting to figure it out. Then BAM! Fucking eight-legged freak out of nowhere! In before one of you retards eats a spider so you can try become Goku. The Necrons are a bit of a two-sided coin. Wait, so like, you you, you get trained, so you're, you're, you're Blink clone. You get trained. They shove a spur down your throat, and it makes you powerful, so like, the spur doesn't control you, but you get like a power-up from it? I'm so confused. Is, is, is that how it works? Like, you just get like a power-up from it? But still, it's like, there, there, are, there has to be downsides to it. Like, it has to control you in some way, right? I mean, you, you can't just have a spider in your just a crackling voice. I, I don't know. If you guys can clarify that, I'd totally appreciate it. On one side, we have Trezini Infinite, acting like an immortal Ash Ketchum, exploring the galaxy, kidnapping people for a laugh, and just having an all-round good time. Mm. Then on the other side, we have legions of soulless undead robots that want to exterminate your balls, or, you know, flay off your flesh and use it as a cloak. Because this mm. coin contrasts so hard with itself, there is a debate about what type of Necrons people prefer. I reckon both are good in their own way and both have their place. The more horrifying Necrons are obviously the ones more applicable to today's video, hence the next scary moment was ironically in one of the Kane novels, novels known for being a bit more lighthearted and funny. When Kane is exploring an ice tunnel, they keep getting ambushed by these big scary insectoid things. 
Not ideal, but the real horror is when they accidentally stumble into a Necron tomb. Oh These shit. Necrons aren't messing about. They have flayed ones and even the incredibly rare pariahs, which is a blank merged with a Necron chassis to create an extremely scary enemy. Like, their superpower is the fact that they are so scary. Kane realizes he has to try shut down the Necron portal that keeps teleporting enemies in, so he recruits an elite squad of stormtroopers to help him. These guys are hard as nails. They have no fear of death at all. Like when one of them dies, the rest just kind of shrug and pour out a cold one for them. On their way to the tomb, they fight some Necrons. No biggie. Then flayed ones attack, killing some of them and stealing their flesh. Still, no biggie. However, when this elite squad is face to face with the pariahs, they all freeze in fear. Even Kane can't move as the terror of wow. their presence turns his legs to stone. He is only saved because Jürgen's blankness somehow blocks their blankness. It doesn't make much sense and probably wouldn't fit into the current canon too well, but there you go. Kane escapes, but these fearless stormtroopers spend their last moments screaming, praying, pissing themselves and crying as they are torn to shreds by the Necrons. Whoa. It was cool to see the Necrons in all their horrifying glory, since the last time I'd read about them was the significantly more lighthearted Infinite and Divine novel. This next one is sad, unnerving and quite horrifying. The short story, The Strange Demise of Titus Endor. Endor and the legendary Eisenhorn used to be best friends, as they were both trained by the same Inquisitor at the mm. same time. Endor was quite the handsome, charming go-getter. That's like the most like light, normal looking armor I've seen in 40k. Cause I mean, this guy, you know, he's he's holding some, but like his armor is nice and clean, sleek, looking good. And you got you know XX person with it like triple the size, bulked out, a bunch of like you know books attached to him and shit, with scars everywhere. You know, like this, like this actually looks like actual armor that you would wear. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah whilst Eisenhorn was the reserved quiet achiever. Their Inquisitor Master was infected with cerebral worms, which is basically Warhammer's very grimdark version of Alzheimer's. Basically, oh. worms infest your brain and nervous system, eating away at your brain matter, oh. causing your memories to merge and distort until eventually they eat your way out of you as you die. You can literally see That's the worms awful. behind someone's eyes if they have it. Eisenhorn and huh? by their master. So you should be looking at someone you see like worm. Nah. Nah. Mm. Until the mm. end, at which I'm point good. They both went off to have successful careers. Eventually, Endor fucks up and ruins his career and friendship with Eisenhorn, going off by himself to do lower grade Inquisitor work. This is where the short story begins. His current assignment is going after a target in a city, trying to find clues as to his whereabouts. The way the story is written is quite jarring, with sections seemingly missing, almost as if there's gaps in Endor's memory, hmm. as well as Endor himself having a strange and borderline senile thought process. He doesn't know where his assistant Inquisitor is, he acts stalkerish and creepy to a girl he meets as he tricks himself into thinking she is a clue into finding his target. It just kind of gets more and more fragmented as the story goes on. He often thinks about an experience he had younger in life, where he survived an attack by an alien beast. However, the legend goes that eventually that beast will return, no matter where he goes, to finish him off. Eventually, his assistant Inquisitor arrives after being spam called by Endor and he cracks the shit, telling Endor to stop bothering him as he is now a full Inquisitor and Endor hasn't been one for years. This upsets and confuses Endor, but he doesn't let it get him down. He continues his investigation, which by this point has all blended into a confusing mess. Sometime later, while he is watching a play as part of his investigation, his assistant Inquisitor arrives and starts apologizing to Endor, saying he had tests run on him and that they found cerebral worms in Endor's brain. He says he wishes he was there for him and can make him comfortable in his last few months. Endor brushes this off as he is too busy with his investigation. The assistant Inquisitor, who turns out to have been a full Inquisitor for years after being promoted by Endor himself, wow. sadly leaves. Endor then realizes he is totally alone in the Opera House before he sees the monster of his past approach and puts him out of his misery. Obviously, the monster was just a metaphor and hallucination for the worms who finally ate their way out of his brain, oh. killing him. The investigation he had been running had been solved years ago, with fragments of it merging with these- How do you even catch that? I, I can't remember if he covered that. Like, how do you catch these worms? Like, uh, I'm trying to think of, like, how, how like, s stuff, like, can actually land on your skin. There's, don't, I don't, I don't want to creep you guys out, but there's, like, certain parts of the country where you can get, like, these, like, certain bugs can go on you and they can, like, lay their eggs in your skin or whatever. Not trying to be weird about it, but it's, like, so I'm thinking maybe it works like that? 
I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to think too far into that. It's going to gross me out. But how do you catch something like this, man? Like, I don't... Current memory, creating false clues and false leads. It was a creepy, sad story to read, leaving you feel deflated. Yeah. Especially as it speaks of Endor as a man who had so much potential and was so bright in his youth, but it all went to shit and he died a horrible death. It's theorized that by Eisenhorn and Endor being so close to their master as the worms took him, that is what infected Endor. The fact that he was paranoid about a Xeno monster hunting him the whole time helped tick this into the element of horror. Not to mention, when someone has cerebral worms, you can see them swimming around in their eyes. Cosmic horror is a tough one to write about. Yeah. It's also kind of tough to describe. A lot of people think that the warp or that the Tyranids are cosmic horror, and they kind of are, but not really. See, we can kind of understand the warp in our own way. The Chaos Gods have pages of lore detailing their past, present, and even future. The Tyranids are also understandable, with the hive mind having been witnessed and even wounded by various events within the galaxy. But to say that Warhammer 40k doesn't have cosmic horror would be like saying transgender athletes don't have a physical advantage over people born as female. <laughs> it's just incorrect. Various worlds have unexplained SCP-like entities on them, whilst the Halo Stars are a thing. The Halo Stars, for those that don't know, are a terrifying section on the border of known space. Wow. The Necron Empire within it went insane and all became flayed ones. The worlds within them are impossible to exterminate. Man, the Necrons go insane. The high fleet that threw through it developed a lot of problems. The best part is that Chaos doesn't even have a purchase there. It isn't a Chaos Realm. It's a Lovecraftian section of space where things that even the Chaos Gods fear reside. Chaos got spirit, the Tyranids got effed up, the Necrons got effed up. Holy shit! <laughs> Dude, there, there's always a bigger fish. There's always a bigger fish in 40k, that's what I'm learning, man. There's always a bigger fish. Died. The galaxy has almost been destroyed by the horror of the Halo Stars, so definitely not one to fuck around with. Yeah. Another bit of cosmic horror is the Well of Eternity, an anomaly within the warp that even Titsnitch is too scared to get close to. Instead, so the cool. God of Change, arguably the most powerful being in existence, has been steadily throwing greater demons into it to see what happens. Only Kairos Fate Weaver was ever able to emerge, now with severe retardation, two heads, and the ability to see the past and future simultaneously. What? As you can imagine, he doesn't make for very good company. I love this shit. Stuff that the gods of chaos and even the Tyranid hive mind know very little about. It opens up so many possibilities. Is there another realm where the old gods of the universe reside, locked away but leaking their influence into real space? Is this what the Rundung were? A race so powerful due to their cosmic horror that the Emperor had to let the Void Dragon fight them like a fucking legendary Pokemon. I like not knowing everything and I like there being room to let my imagination run That's wild what makes 40k in awesome. of ways. And finally, speaking of the Halo Stars, we have the Halo Devices. These Xeno devices found by rogue traders within the Halo Stars seem cool, giving you immortality and superpowers. Not Whoa. bad. Until we get to the side effects, and boy are there some fucking side effects. Sure, the first little while using it is good, your body is purged of all imperfections and impurities, and you can even regrow lost limbs. This is the honeymoon stage, as the device sinks into your flesh and becomes one with you. However, after only a couple of years, your mind will begin to break, your body will distort, and you'll gain a hunger for flesh. After oh. a few decades, you will have become a literal Xeno, and not in like a cutesy Eldar way. You'll be a walking abomination who is nearly impossible to kill. It's unclear if the Xenos who made the Halo devices were total fucking assholes, or it's simply just not very compatible with humans. Oh, hell no! The artwork of someone who uses them is scary, and I really don't know why people use them. You get like, a year of feeling good until you become a monster. Really shit deal in my opinion. I mean like, only after a couple decades of using it, you're completely gonzo. Horror within 40k is something I vibe with hard. There are plenty more elements of it, so if this video does well, then we'll do more. If you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, then Patreon is the place to be. Where only one dollar you have access to a boatload of fun, fun stuff Bruh. that you probably should not show your kid. <laughs> just get that out of here. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, that was awesome. Uh, definitely horrifying. The one that got me was the, uh, you know, like the space worm thing, you know, where you get like, you know, they're crawling your eyes and stuff like, like they're swimming your eyes. That was a big nope for me. Uh, the flesh eating one, where you get like the immortality and whatnot, that was a close second. But that, but, but that worm one was, that, that's pretty awful. Honestly, it's like you just, 
you basically don't know you're dying and your memories start slipping away and you go crazy, but then you eventually just die. I mean, that's a pretty horrible death, you know? So that takes the cake for me personally. Let me know which one you guys think was the worst and which one you guys found the most interesting. Again, the original video will be in the description. Make sure you guys show Major kills some love. As you guys know, he does a phenomenal job. He takes a lot of pride into 40K and I appreciate it. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. It'll be huge. Uh, I hope you guys are great. Great rest of your guys' day. Love you guys. Take care.